Planar Binding. <laughs> What an incredibly strong spell, but also quite disruptive when used to its fullest extent. I talked a bit about this spell in my Summon Greater Demon video, so I thought it would be a good idea to talk about it now. Welcome to Pack Tactics, where we have everything under control. Planar Binding. This is a lot of text, by the way. With this spell, you attempt to bind a celestial, an elemental, a fey, or a fiend to your service. The creature must be within range for the entire casting of the spell. That's an hour, and it has a 60-foot range. Typically, the creature is first summoned in the center of an invert magic circle in order to keep it trapped while this spell is cast. At the completion of the casting, the target must make a charisma saving throw. On a failed save, it is bound to your service for the duration. If the creature was summoned or created by another spell, that spell's duration is extended to match the duration of this spell. A bound creature must follow your instructions to the best of its ability. You might commit command the creature to accompany you on an adventure, to guard a location, or to deliver a message. The creature obeys the letter of your instructions, but if the creature is hostile to you, it strives to twist your words to achieve its own objectives. If the creature carries out your instructions completely before the spell ends, it travels to you to report this fact if you are on the same plane of existence. If you are on a different plane of existence, it returns to the place where you bound it and remains there until the spell ends. At higher levels, when he casts his spell using a spell slot of a higher level, the duration increases to 10 days with a 6th level slot, to 30 days with a 7th level slot, to 180 days with an 8th level slot, and to a year and a day with a 9th level slot. To cast a spell, you have to have a jewel worth at least 1,000 gold, which the spell consumes. As with other saving throw effects, we can increase their chance of failure in a variety of ways. Silvery Barbs is a good example. It's really cheap, and it's really good. The Eloquence Bard's Unsettling Words works too. I would definitely recommend you research what options your party has to make this spell stick. This is a team game after all, so let's optimize together, you know? Anyways, once the creature fails to save, you're set. You've got yourself a minion. The spell says a hostile creature will twist your commands, but a way to counter that is by making them more specific. At base, this spell is pretty good. However, by upcasting this spell one level, we tenfold its duration from one day to ten days. This spell just becomes wild at that point, especially because because it becomes rather easy to bind multiple creatures at once. Even with your spell slots being limited, of course, the more creatures you have under your control, the better off you'll be. Obviously, the higher the spell slot, the better the spell becomes. But even 10 days is a long time. With an optimized party with summons, this basically becomes the best spell in the entire game. So, what creatures do you bind? Well, basically whatever you can get your hands on. Of course, sometimes you need to choose one option over another, at which point I recommend you go with spellcasters or strong brawlers. But Kobold, how do you even do that? Don't they just kill you if you try? Well, there are multiple ways to get around that fact. You could, for example, knock them unconscious, which gives you 1d4 hours to do whatever you have to do. And if that isn't enough, you should be able to knock them unconscious again. <gasps> oh my god, Kobold! Melee marshals are useful now! <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Maybe the druid has conjure animals and they can do the job, or you have anime objects or something, I don't know. But yeah, you can bind summons from your own party. Some cool options are a Dipic from Summon Greater Demon, which has the ability to cast Dimension Door at will. Or you can use Conjure Fae to conjure a Chord, which has fantastic attacks, a huge range for Tremor Sense, and good spells. An issue you might notice is that summon spells usually disappear after an hour, and thus taking control over them wouldn't really do a whole lot. But Planar Binding has a fix for this in the spell itself. If the creature was summoned or created by another spell, that spell's duration is extended to match the duration of this spell. But wouldn't that mean you have to concentrate on a very long time to keep that summon? You would think, but nope. 
As stated, the duration is extended to match the duration of planar binding. Concentration is a subsection of duration, something that you can see on both D&D Beyond and in your own books. Planar binding doesn't require concentration, and thus if the summon spell's duration is changed, it also no longer requires concentration. Obviously, there's a lot of options than the ones I mentioned. For more demons, check out my summon greater demon video. Tabletop Builds talks about multiple fey ones in a build, link down below. If you have spells like summon celestials, consider quaggles. What if I don't have any friends? Gator, you have more friends than me. When I joke around and stuff like that, people just get super angry. Anyways, there are ways to cast planar binding on your own summons, but it becomes a little bit more complicated. Planar binding takes an hour to cast, which means we need to concentrate on it for an entire hour. And usually the summon spells require concentration too. Therefore, the easiest way to do so is using Glyph of Warding, Magic Circle, your summon spell, and planar binding. And Private Sanct them. I almost forgot about that one. Oh, and also dice. Duh. I'm so forgetful. This video is sponsored by Only Crits, where they sell you dice. They've got a bundle option now, fit for mighty dragons like us. Wow! It comes with a bag with six sets of dice in it. I have this bag. I love this bag. And you get this scaly dice set. Kobold, you're a furry! No, Gator, these are scaly dice. Anyways, you also get this fancy scaly scroll to fit the theme. And a dice tray, and this adventure called A Dance with Destiny. Wow, that's a lot of stuff! It is, and they've got plenty more. You can buy little friends too. Look, duckies! Duckies! Everyone loves duckies. Fun fact, by the way, if you buy any set of dice, you also get an adventure for free with it. And you pick the adventure. Check out onlycrits.com slash packtactics. It's great, and if you like what you see, get some dice yourself. Use the coupon code packtactics for 12% discount. First things first, you cast Glyph of Warding. This is a big spell, so let me just talk about the relevant part. Spell Glyph, you can store a prepared spell of third level or lower in the glyph by casting it as part of creating the glyph. The spell must target a single creature or an area. The spell being stored has no immediate effect when cast in this way. When the glyph is triggered, the stored spell is cast. If the spell has a target, it targets the creature that triggered the glyph. If the spell affects an area, the area is centered on that creature. If the spell summons hostile creatures or creates harmful objects or traps, they appear as close as possible to the intruder and attack it. If the spell requires concentration, it lasts until the end of its full duration. At higher levels, when you cast a spell using a spell slot of 4th level or higher, ba ba da ba If you create a spell glyph, you can store any spell of up to the same level as the slot you use for the glyph of warding. Of course, we upcast this until we can cast planar binding at the level we desire. That's gonna cost us some components that's at least worth 200 gold, which it consumes. We set some condition for the glyph to trigger after we use our summon spell. Before that, we need to cast another spell or even multiple. If the creature we are summoning can teleport like the Dybbuk, we first use Private Sanctum, which lasts 24 hours. The relevant parts are nothing can teleport into or out of the ward. Planar travel is blocked within the warded area. Lastly, we also need Magic Circle. You create a 10 foot radius, 20 foot tall cylinder of magical energy centered on a point on the ground that you can see within range. Glowing runes appear whenever the cylinder intersects with the floor or other surface. Choose one or more of the following types of creatures. Celestials, Elementals, Fey, Fiends, or Undead. The circle affects a creature of the chosen type in the following ways. The creature can't willingly enter the cylinder by non-magical means. If the creature tries to use teleportation or interplanar travel to do so, it must first succeed on a charisma saving throw. The creature has disadvantage on attack rolls against targets 
within the cylinder. The target within the cylinder can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by the creature. When you cast a spell, you can elect to cause its magic to operate in the reverse direction, preventing a creature of the specified type from leaving the cylinder and protecting targets outside it. At higher levels, when you cast a spell using a spell slot of fourth level or higher, the duration increases by one hour for each slot level above third. Of course, we invert the circle. The spell's components are ba 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 that's worth at least 100 gold, which it consumes. We then cast our summon spell, for example, summon greater demon and trigger the glyph and ta-da! Classes that get to acquire magic circle, glyph awarding and planar binding are wizards, clerics, bards, and under some circumstances, sorcerers. Of course, you'll want to get a summoning spell at this point. But kobold! All these spells cost money! How would you even afford all this? Gator, you're in tier 3. You have money, or you should have money. Anyways, we can make money easily via spells like Fabricate, where we can create flax or armor, as described in Tabletop Build's Guide on Tools. You should read it. It's good. Or we can make a castle with wall of stone and stone shape, and then sell it from there. All in all, you should have the money to spend, and having a powerful minion is worth it. Before I finish off this video, let me actually be a good content creator for once. Warning! I think this spell should stick to the theoretical side of things. You don't want your game to end up being something like Warhammer 40k or something. But that's the thing, communicate with your table on how you should limit this spell, because raw the only limit is time and gold, and making gold is super easy at this level. Maybe limit the amount of bound creatures overall to the amount of party members you have. Maybe even less. This is something you should discuss if you're interested in this spell. End of video. I recommend you buy some cool dice from OnlyCrits, and I also hope to earn your subscription. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.